Everyone has been telling you to do the past papers. You've done them, the exams are coming up, what do you do next? Now, a lot of you have probably heard of Corbett Maths. Corbett Maths have so, so many great resources, and today I'm gonna to be talking about one of them. I first heard about this back in January of this year, and the thing I'm talking about is their five-a-day worksheets. If you go on their website, they have every single day for the entire year listed. Everything from numeracy up to higher plus, which is for those students that are aiming for those level eights and nines, they have five questions a day that you can do over a whole range of different topics. And just to give you an example, I'm gonna do the five a day for today's date, all the way from numeracy to higher plus. As you can see on the screen now, I have the timestamps. If you're here for a certain ability, you can skip the video and go straight to those points. But to be honest, it'll be a really good revision source for you just to make sure you can do all the foundation stuff before that as well. So I recommend hanging around and watching the entire video. I don't want to waste any more of your time, as I know your time is precious at the moment, but I hope you enjoy and please subscribe and like if you find the video useful. Starting off, we just have the numeracy skills. This level will be for the people who just want to build up their confidence with maths and get a good concept of the basic foundations of it. So we have a list of numbers, write down a square number. 16 is going to be our square number there. From the list, write down a multiple of 9, so basically the 9 times table, and we can see 18 is going to be that multiple. From the list, the two numbers which are factors of 36 will be 12, because 12 times 3, and 18, because 18 times 2. Weekly wage equals basic wage plus number of cars sold times by the bonus payment. The basic wage is 350 and a bonus of £30 is paid for every car sold. Mike sold six cars. So because of bid mass, we have to do the multiplication first, which is going to be 350 plus 180, and that's going to be equal to £530. This is the net for which solid. If you imagine that was like a cardboard box and you rolled it all up, that would be a cuboid. Work out the difference between 25% of 100 and half of 80. So 25% of 100 is just 25. Half of 80, if we divide it by 2, we get 40. So 40, take away 25, is going to be 15. And that is the end of the numeracy one. On to foundation. This is more of a GCSE style questions. If you're just working towards that 4 or the 5, this is where you want to look first. So work out a 7th plus 5 sixths. As always, we want to find a common denominator. So we multiply them together, get 42. And if we cross multiply, 6 times 1, 5 times 7, 41 over 42. Find the area of the shaded square. Now what we have here is a right angle triangle. So if we do Pythagoras, we can do the square root of 8 squared plus 2 squared, which is going to be the square root of 64 plus 4, which is the square root of 68. That means the side length is root 68. And root 68 squared, because it's a square and we're finding the area, is just 68. And that would be centimetres squared. Just always look out for those units. Find the size of angle X. So if we know that there's three angles within this quadrilateral, we can do 107, add 125, add 90, which gives us 322. 360 take away 322 is going to be 38. So that means that this one down here is 38. If we take that away from 180, we get 142. 142 add 18 is 160. And if we take that away from 180, x must be 20. Write down four common multiples of 9 and 6. So if we just write out the 6 times table, and then we write out the 9 times table, from here we just need to find the ones that are in both. So 18, 36, 54, and 72. That's going to be our 4. What is the name of the line OA? That looks like the radius because O is the centre. And BC is a chord. So foundation plus is probably aimed at those pushing for that level five or really, really solidifying that level four. So definitely have a look at these if you're doing that. Alternatively, if we're doing higher, this will be kind of the first couple questions in the exam. So again, also good to just make sure you can do comfortably. Write this in standard form. Now, normal standard form, the front number has to be between 
1 and 10 ultimately. So 5.94112. Now if we've decreased this by a factor of 100, we need to increase this by a factor of 100, so it's going to be 10 to the 14. Same for this. This will just have to be 7 times 10. Now this one has become 1, 2, 3, 4 times as big, which is ultimately 10,000. So this has to become 10 to the 4 times smaller, so minus 14. Solving a quadratic, x squared plus x minus 20. So we need to have two brackets, x at the start of both of them. Because it's a minus 20 we need to make, that has to be a positive and a negative. And the only two factors of 20 that have a difference of 1 is 4 and 5. Because it's a positive 1x when we add them, that means the bigger number has to be positive and the smaller number negative. So x is equal to minus 5 and x is equal to 4. In a sale, the price of a sofa is reduced by 70%. That means 30% is equal to 255. So 10%, if we divide that by 3, is equal to £85. Pounds. So 100%, which is the normal price, will be £850. Hugo is flying a kite. It looks like we're going to have trigonometry here. So if I complete the triangle, we're trying to work out the opposite. And we have the hypotenuse, so that's going to be so, which will be sin of 65 equals opposite over 9. So the opposite is going to equal 9 multiplied by sin 65. If we pop that into a calculator, we get 8.16 meters. And then because he is also at 1.5 meters off the ground by the time he's holding it, it's going to be 8.16 add 1.5, which is 9.66 meters. Now onto the higher. Again, if you're doing foundation, it wouldn't hurt to understand these ones as well, because as you can see, a fair few of these you can probably do anyway. So write down the value of 125 to the power of a third. Now, power of a third just means cube root. So that's going to be five. And if it's a negative power, it flips a fraction. So one over eight squared, which is one over 64. Show this triangle is right angled. Now, the way we want to prove any triangle is right angled is Pythagoras. So basically, if we do root 3 squared, add 2 plus root 5 squared, our C should be this, but we will solve that and find out. So root 3 squared is just 3, and then 2 plus root 5 will be 4 plus 4 root 5 plus 5, because we expand it like double brackets, equals C squared. If we collect all the terms up, we're going to have 12 plus 4 root 5, which is equal to C squared, and if we square root that, I would recommend using a calculator. Our answer is indeed root 2 plus root 10. At a cafe, a coffee costs X pounds and a tea costs Y pounds. Six coffees and seven teas cost 22. Eight coffees and nine teas cost 29. Whenever you see something like this, we have two unknown values, the price of the coffee and the price of the tea. Immediately, this tells us simultaneous equations. So you set up your equations. We have... 6x plus 7y equals 22, and we have 8x plus 9y equals 29. We solve this just like simultaneous equations. I've just put this on a fresh page so that we can have plenty of space to do our workings. We need to find a multiplier so that we can make either the x's or the y's the same. In this case, I'm going to make the x's the same, so we can make both the x's 24. If we multiply this by 4, this by 3, that's going to give us 24x plus 28y equals 88. Always remember to multiply the entire equation. 24x plus 27y equals 87. Now from there, we can take away the x's because they will cancel out, leaving us with y equals 1 because 88 take away 87. And then if we go back to our original equations, 6x plus 7 lots of 1 is equal to 22. So 6x plus 7 equals 22. 6x equals 15 pounds. So x is equal to 2 pounds and 50 pence. So a coffee would be 2 pound 50. And a tea would cost 1 pound. And the final question, 
The width of B is 50% more than the width of A. The area of B is 20% more than the area of A. Work out the ratio X to Y. So we know that the width of B is 50% more than the width of A. So that means that this must be 45 because 1.5 times 30. We also know that 30x times by 1.2 is equal to 45y. So putting these together, we can say 36x equals 45y. So the ratio of x to y is 45 to 36, which if we divide by 9, we're going to get 5 to 4. And finally, on to the higher plus. So this is mainly for those level 7, 8 or 9 students. So looking at the first question, whenever you see something like this, it's normally to do with factorising the quadratics and manipulating it somehow so that things cancel out. So straight away I notice we can factorise this quadratic at the bottom to 3x and x. And in the brackets we're going to have plus 2 and minus 7. And then when you divide fractions, we multiply and then flip the last fraction. So keep, change, flip, some of you may know it as. Again, if we factorise this, we're going to have 1 on the bottom, 2x in the first bracket, x in the second bracket, minus 5 and positive 2. If we combine those together, we're going to have 2x minus 5, x plus 2 on the top. And on the bottom, because we're multiplying it all by 1, they just stay the same. So 3x minus 7 and x plus 2. Now, if you get to this point, you know you've done it well because you have two brackets that cancel out which leaves you strictly with the bit in the blue box as your answer. The area of ABC is 22.981, calculate the length of AB. So we know using the formula half AB sin C, we can work out, let's call this one B. So half multiplied by 10 B times sine of 50 is gonna equal 22.981. So if we put in our calculator, b is equal to 22.981. If we divide this whole thing underneath, so half multiplied by 10, multiplied by sine 50, then we're going to get our value for b. So b is equal to 6, and then using the cosine rule, if I just get rid of that, give us a bit of space. So if I call a b a, we know that a squared is equal to 6 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 lots of 6 times 10 cos 50. And if I put all that in the calculator, I get 58.87. And then if I square root that, I get 7.67 centimetres. On to functions. So if f of x is 1 over 2x plus 1, f of 3 is going to be 1 over 2 lots of 3 plus 1, which is equal to 1 over 7. Completing the square, find the turning point. So we half the middle value, put that in the brackets. We square the middle value and take the negative of it, so minus 36 and minus 3. So x minus 6 squared. Simplifying this, we get minus 39. So our turning point is 6 and minus 39. Opposite of what's in the bracket, this one goes down there. The first five terms in a quadratic sequence are this. Find the first term in the sequence that is greater than 400. If we find the nth term of this first, so if we find the differences, we have 3, 5, 7 and 9. Because that secondary difference is 2, this is going to be an n squared. If we rewrite n squared underneath, we have 8, 11, 16, 23, 32, n squared being 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Get the differences of those, we get 7, 7. 7 and 7. So it is n squared plus 7. We want to find the first one that is greater than 400. So n squared is greater than 393, which is equal to 19.8. So if we substitute n equals 20 into our equation, then 20 squared is 400, add 7, we get 407. And that is going to be the higher plus sheet completed. As always, thank you for making it this far in the video. If you found the video useful, please consider liking and subscribing so I can keep making these videos for you. Good luck in those exams.